Good evening, everyone. I'm Larry Kudlow. Welcome back to the Kudlow Report, where we still believe free market capitalism is the best path to prosperity. All right, topic A tonight. Stocks continue to roar, up about 3% across the board this week. With this weird January employment report that I call a snow job, stocks even eked out some gains today. And by the way, let's not forget the ISMs for manufacturing and services that boomed earlier in the week. All this, my friends, is strength that may be pointing to a 4% economy. But the downside of the upside is that commodity prices continue to soar. The food index gained more than 2% this week. It is now up 45% over the past year. Business prices also rising. An easy Fed is your market friend. But when is the tipping point when rising inflation becomes your market enemy? Let's talk and go straight to our market mavens. Here now we have Todd Schoenberger, Managing Director of Land Cult Trading, Keith McCullough, CNBC contributor and CEO of Hedge Eye Risk Management, and Tommy Belisis, founder and CEO of John Thomas Financial. Tommy Belisis, I don't care about this snow job report. I don't know, maybe the unemployment rate fell, maybe it didn't. The whole thing was ridiculous. I do care about the huge strength in the manufacturing and services report from the purchasing managers, the ISMs. And I also care about the fact that their price indexes are soaring. So I ask you, are we in inflationary growth and how do you make money play in that scenario? Well, Larry, I think overall all of these numbers, including the payroll numbers, are all positive. I don't think we have an issue right now with inflation. I mean, let's take a look at the payroll numbers, right? They didn't come in as good as expected, but they were better than what people thought, what I thought, which shows an improvement in the economy. I mean, the unemployment number came in at 9%, which is the lowest in 21 months. The shortfall in actual jobs was due to the industries that were affected by the weather, hence construction. But you also have to look at that, that number, which is the average hourly earnings number, which increased better than expected, which is showing employers are willing to pay more, which means they have more money. So at the end of the day, you know, it is my opinion that the economy is moving in the right direction, which is causing the market to forecast down the road that better things lie ahead, which is obviously a great time to be in stocks. All right, in stocks. But Tom, uh, let me go back to Todd Schoenberger. Todd. You can't ignore the massive rise in commodities. You can't ignore the massive increase in the ISM manufacturing and service price index. You just can't ignore that. And I want to ask you, is there an inflationary component to this growth story? The economy is growing. I agree with Tommy 100%, but I see the inflation coming. And I want to know how an investor can play that. Because an easy money Fed is our friend right now, but not if inflation comes up and bites us in the keister later on. <laughs> That's right, Larry. But you have to look at corporate profits. Look at the bottom line. You know, when you start thinking of inflation, you also have products and, and services that are also going to be increased. So that widens corporate margins. And you also, this is probably at the expense of human capital, but Fortune 500 companies are just not hiring. I, we saw the evidence of that today. So when you go forward, you have to think companies are going to continue to beat on that bottom line. You already have 70% plus of S&P 500 companies that have done that already. That's going to be great for stocks and it's going to continue probably for the rest of the year. All right. For the rest of the year, for the rest of the year. Do we actually believe that for the rest of the year? Let me go to Keith McCullough. The rest of the year without it. So far, our two panelists have dodged my inflation challenge. And I want to go to you, Keith, on that inflation challenge. <laughs> Well, the, the obvious answer on inflation is be long inflation. And the two ways to be long inflation is to be short bonds and be long energy stocks, be long corn, be long food, be long anything that's actually inflating, at the same time admitting to yourself that down the line, inflation becomes a problem. To the point that inflation wouldn't hurt corporate margins is something that I don't think I've heard since the last Canadian junior hockey party I was at. When you look at, obviously, inflation in the 70s, uh, you know, corporate margins were a lot lower. As soon as inflation gets into the system, whether it being cost of goods sold, which as you pointed out was also the other part of the ISM manufacturing report, was the prices paid component, which is up about 350% since it bottomed in 2008. So you can't sit there in you know, la la land saying that inflation is going to hurt and nobody. And nobody is because it's inflation, hurt inflation is actually helping companies right now. Unless they were actually going out and hiring, then you would see unit labor or you would see labor costs go up and you're not seeing that at all. Look, it is helping the bottom line of these companies because no, they're not hiring. No, yes, it no, is. I, I 
I want to add, so I want to challenge you on that. The labor cost thing may come later. What you are seeing, and Keith referred to this, is the higher inflation, the prices paid, is could cut into profit margins. Profits are the mother's milk of this stock. And rally. that, and profits those, and an easy money fed. And I want to get to tax rates later, but I want you to address. Okay, Keith has given us a whole bunch of interesting ways to beat inflation. I want to hear from you. What's a way to beat inflation? You, you're right. right. Yes. No, Todd, I want to get from okay. you. You were talking about labor costs. Yeah. I don't buy that. I say inflation's coming on. Labor's going to be the last to go. If you have an inflationary growth scenario, I'm trying to be realistic and sober. Right. What's the best way to play that? It's clearly you have the, the obvious answer is gold when you start looking at gold. But you have to look at blue chip stocks right now, Larry, because you still have companies like this, the big companies that are still beating inflation rates. And that's going to continue well into the year. And that is when you start thinking of corporate profit. So the higher costs have to either be passed on to the consumer or the company is going to take right. a hit. Well, what right. do you think is going to happen? It's going to be passed on to the consumer. And, and Larry, if I can add to yeah. this, okay? Go ahead, Tommy. Rising costs. There's going to be a tug of war with the companies that can pass through the rising costs, right? The market is going to be selective, but there are pockets of strength in sectors out there that you're going to be able to buy into with this, so to speak, inflationary problem that people may see down the road. So there are opportunities out there to take advantage of an inflationary stance if that's going to happen. And how do you do that? Give me a for instance. Like, for instance, you know, these, like, I would agree on the energy sector, right? I mean, look at the energy sector. It's a huge sector. The energy sector has been one of the best performing sectors in the market for the last three years. I mean, energy has gone up over 300 percent. Oil, let's talk about oil. And the S&P has gone up 50 percent. So to say that, you know, if we have an inflationary stance, it's going to hurt the economy. It's not necessarily true. I believe that we are going to adapt to it and the market will trend higher based on that Nat. All right, Keith, two things that are not inflationary. We always talk about the Fed. We always talk about earnings. That's good. I want to go to Washington. We have lower tax rates. The Bush tax rates are extended. Businesses got a big 100% cash expensing. And we got the announcement yesterday and today the House Republicans will be cutting the budget spending quite substantially. This is the first time since Ronald Reagan, for example. Now, I want to ask you, Keith, how good is this for the market? Tax rates coming down, limited government spending. What does that mean? Very few people associate that with this bull. But I'm one of them who does. What's your take? Well, this is the one thing that I could get bullish on, definitely from here, Larry. And we did get bullish on Thursday and Friday for this very reason. The deficit being addressed, and I mean right up the middle into the Super Bowl, is taking that dollar up. If you take the dollar up, you start to take the things that everybody's addicted to on the inflation trade side down. And, you, and you, you've seen a very high correlation to the number one thing that matters to this economy in the last two days. With the dollar going up, the consumer stocks have gone up because oil's come down. So this is a very healthy thing if we address this that's issue, not going to continue, see it on the Keith. That will not continue, Keith, and you know that, because you're still going to have a weaker dollar. We still had Ben, ben Bernanke talk at the National Press Club the other day where he <laughs> didn't even alter his mood on QE2. And as a matter of fact, he even brought out a couple of hints. If necessary, there'll be a QE3. So you're, you ha can only anticipate a weaker dollar, higher commodity costs down the road. But I still think this is still a bull run that's going to last for a while. Tommy, at what point does this Bernanke QE3 speculation, if he ever does it, and that'll sink the dollar even more, and that'll boom commodities even more, and that'll boost inflation even more. At what point does that become a bad thing for stocks and a bad thing for the economy? I want to know that. Right now, things look good. We don't need the Fed, if you ask me. We'd be better off letting Washington cut tax rates and spending. But if Bernanke stubbornly insists on doing this, how do you play that? How do you assess that? Well, Larry, you know, as we all know, we can't fight the Fed. Yes, the Fed is inflating the economy. So, you know, we got to ride the trends. You know, from a technical standpoint right now and historically, we're in the third year of the presidential cycle. So all points to the bullish side. So at a point, if something does happen where we get overextended and overinflated, then we can take action. But right now, there's too much bullish signs out there for us to be on the negative side. So, you know, until something, you know, trends, uh, you know, on the other side, you know, right now, we're very aggressive to the, to the upside. Very good. You guys are very interesting, very bullish. Keith, I think your point about falling gold and commodities from better fiscal policy in Washington is the most interesting thing going on out there. If that continues, a lot of experts on gold and oil and commodities may be proven very wrong. Now, fellas, stay right where you are. Next up, we're going to focus on oil and drill, drill, drill. And government regulation making gas jump a nickel a gallon a month.
In America, Ford, $5 gas at the pump. We're going to bring in former Shell Oil President and CEO John Hoffmeister, who's not really painting a very pretty picture. And later, despite the lackluster snow jobs report, the economy may actually be picking up steam. But why aren't you hearing it hollered from the mountaintops? My Free Market Friday panel debates whether we are underselling the strength of the economic recovery. Viewers of the Color Report know that I've been banging the drill, drill, drill drum for years, and I have not budged a bit. I say open up all available energy options, oil, gas, nuclear, wind, solar, clean coal, you name it. Why am I telling you this? Because Brent crude prices recently surged well above 100 bucks is the world's way of reminding us every flashpoint makes America vulnerable. And it doesn't even take into account the already insatiable appetite for oil. So joining me now is a very special guest. We welcome former Shell Oil President and CEO John Hoffmeister. He's the founder of Citizens for Affordable Energy. He's the author of Why We Hate the Oil Companies. Our market panel is still with us. Paul, great to see you. So I want to ask you this. You're predicting five dollars a barrel. Is that right? If you are right, that is going to sink the recovery. That is going to sink the stock market. That is going to sink the whole ship. Why are we going to five dollars a barrel at the pump? It's a huge tax that we're putting on ourselves, Larry, because we're unwilling to drill our own oil in this country. Look, we've got political instability that's getting chaotic in the Middle East, and oil hates instability. Number two, China and the U.S. are in deep winter doldrums. And winter is supposed to be the period of low demand of oil. We're headed for spring. And while there is some inventory at the moment, that inventory is not that big, and it's going to be eaten up dramatically with any kind of, of economic growth, which we're experiencing. So those factors combined, I say we're right back in the 2007-2008 time frame, and the U.S. is reducing its production by not drilling. It's absolutely absurd what we're doing to ourselves as a nation. Well, OPEC Jack looks at us and say, why don't you drill your own oil? Don't count on us to bail you people out. John, does the new Republican Congress make any difference? Will they hold back the EPA? Will Washington hate oil a little less? Will Washington allow even more drilling of natural gas, which I think you would agree in the short run is really our best hope for cleaner burning fuel with a lot of great potential there. Will Washington be more market friendly? I ask you. I'm counting on it, Larry. The voters spoke last November. The direction we were going was unacceptable. People look at what's happening. They look at what they're paying at the pump. And who wants to pay 350, 365 in New York, which the prices are now? Who wants to pay 310 in rural America when there's no need for it? if we could produce our own oil. We used to produce 10 million barrels a day, and I've been all over the country saying, why don't we set a national goal to go back to 10 million barrels a day U.S. production? We're currently at seven. With the Gulf shut in, we're on our way to six. Mm. We could create three million jobs, alleviate the pressure on global crude oil prices, and make sure that energy stays affordable because supply exceeds demand. Tommy, That's a very simple formula. All right, you're, Tommy Belize, I want to go to you because I'm anointing you the country's greatest bull. You are surpassing <laughs> Dr. Bob. You are surpassing, you are surpassing everybody. So I want to ask you, you heard the distinguished gentleman from formerly Saran Shell Oil. You heard him talk about $5 a gallon at the pump, okay? You heard him say that. What's your reaction? What would that do to you? your bullishness. Well, John, I, I mean, Larry, I do agree with John's assessment that we have to drill more here in the States. There's no question about it. But let's look between 2004 and 2008. Oil went up over 300 percent, yet the S&P gained 50 percent. So now we're saying that gas is going to go up a merely 30 percent. It's going to hit the market. It just doesn't make Tommy sense. Tommy this you are smoking something. That $150 <laughs> oil and that $4 plus gasoline so totally sank this economy. People that couldn't pay their mortgages at the margin couldn't pay them at all well, because all the money was going to the not, gas tax. Let's not forget this. This is an incredible <laughs> thing. Keith McCullough, will you help him out for heaven's sakes? He's actually trying to tell me that John Hoffmeister's scenario of $5 gas the pump won't hurt? What is going on here? <laughs> it's smoking the wacky tobacco. I mean, this is what you need to do. 
you know, if you're really lo like, we're long oil stocks, we're long Suncor, you know, we're even long, long Russian oil stocks, for God's sakes, at this point. $5 oil might be good for those positions, but it will not be good for the U.S. consumer, which is 70% of the economy. If you look at the Completely consumer stocks wrong. already, uh, Larry, year to date, the consumer sectors are the two worst performing sectors. You look at stocks like McDonald's, which is a pretty good bellwether of inflation and consumer traffic. You know, this stock's down 8% since listen, the beginning of guys, December. Listen, guys, listen. With oil, 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 oil prices are up. Oil prices are up 25%.